the official definition of a recession has just happened. But surprisingly, I turned on the news and I looked through information today, financial news, and did not see these headlines all over the place like I thought. I thought there would be recession, recession, rece recession headlines, but there wasn't. And then when I listened to some reporting, some talking heads, they glossed over the fact that we actually just entered an official recession. Now, when I say official, I'm talking about the definition that's been used for a long time. Even mainstream business entities like Oxford has said that two quarters of negative GDP growth is a recession. And we even have headlines out there like this one right here. U.S. economy contracts for second straight quarter. The U.S. economy shrank for a second consecutive quarter this year with GDP shrinking at an annualized rate of 0.9%. Right, so this should be news that's blasting everywhere. There should be headlines out there saying that there's a recession. That should be the topic everywhere you look in the business and the financial world, but it's not. Um, why do you think so? Why do you think it's not? Are they trying to convince people that what is happening is not actually happening? Well, if you just look at the news that we've been covering, we know that a recession should have been declared a long, long time ago. In fact, if you ask many people, we never recovered from the 2008 financial crisis. As this whole, what they call economic recovery, was based on people borrowing money, spending money that they didn't have, uh, pumping up bubbles, pumping up the cost of rents, uh, home prices being pumped up into bubble territory once again. And now here we are, 2022, and people have leveraged themselves way beyond affordability, way beyond their means. And these personal debt levels of the average U.S. consumer are unsustainable. Even the definition out of Oxford here in this dictionary indicates that recession should be officially declared right now. Here it is. A period of temporary economic decline during which trade and industrial activity are reduced, generally identified by a fall in GDP in two consecutive quarters. Right. So we have met the official recession indicators or we have met the official metrics that have historically been used to declare if a recession is here or not, but they're not declaring a recession. Why is that? Now take a listen to this and listen to how they try to explain away the recession that we're actually in right now and listen to this newscaster, then listen to Fed Chair Jerome Powell talk and it seems to me like he's stumbling but first, listen to the news a guy here from this uh, report explain away the two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. Then Jerome Powell after that. Take a listen. U.S. GDP shrank by 0.9% between April and June. It's second straight decline and a strong recession signal. The report comes after the Federal Reserve raised rates by 75. So now he's calling it a strong recession signal instead of saying, okay, this is now a recession because it meets the definition of a recession. Five basis points yesterday and Fed Chair Jay Powell making some market moving comments. We will continue to make our decisions meeting by meeting and communicating and communicate our th thinking as clearly as possible. As the stance of monetary policy tightens further, it likely will become appropriate to slow the pace of increases while we assess how our cumulative policy adjustments are affecting the economy and inflation. There you have it. Slow the pace of increases. They're already talking about slowing down on the rate. People are seeing in their area. That's what that email is for. And of course, inflation right now, in terms of a lot of people seeing things so expensive on the shelves, is a top worry for many folks here, not just in the United States, but everywhere. But we are getting a lot of different feedbacks, uh, a lot of feedback about everything. There's a lot to be concerned about. So first of all, I want to say right now, <clears throat> I will repeat myself. Forgive me. But for those that have not heard me say this before, you do not need to come to a YouTube channel to understand that we are in a recession. We have been in a recession. I don't care what voodoo manipulation and... Uh, 
sprinkling of magic dust that they're trying to do right now to make you believe that you are not in a recession. You know better. You do not need me to tell you that. You do not need another YouTuber to tell you that. You don't need anybody on the news media to tell you that, in the newspaper, on a blog, even your mama. You should have enough common sense, and I know that you do, that when you have gone shopping or bought gas or done anything with your life over the last three to six months, you can't help but turn around and look and go, this isn't looking real good. So we're gonna go past that and say, we know where we are, you know where you are, you don't need some knucklehead numbskull, including me, telling you what the economic situation of the world and of the, of the global economy is looking like. You already feel it when you go and buy groceries for your family, when you are paying what I don't even want to guess how many some of you are paying to drive back and forth to work every week. I know what we're paying here. I know what my husband pays. And I'm telling you right now, it has made a huge dent in our pocketbook as it has yours. It's very painful, especially when you have to also account for higher energy prices. And we won't even go back into talking about the situation. Get some air on me. I'm, I'm, my, my neck's going to turn red. Talking about the cost just to run a farm right now. Those are all separate huge conversations and they are enough to make you so mad that we would be here forever ranting. But let me explain to you right now. They are going to try to convince you that you are it, it, it okay, let me let me be let me be modest. They are going to try to convince you it looks like it looks like it appears they could be trying to likely deny or make you believe that we are not in a recession. And that's what the way that the conversation and the narrative is being flipped to by the end of the week. Because you see, we can just change reality anytime we want to when it's convenient for our narrative, right? Right. I want to be a bumblebee today, so I'm a bumblebee. Buzz, buzz. So that's the way we roll now. So if I just tell you you're not in a recession, then oh, you're not. If I tell you that we can just sort of change the numbers and maybe we need to rethink things, then, oh, you're not. You know, kind of like you reimagine, you know, reimagine. Remember how you were reimagining so many things and reimagine? Now you've been reimagined so much, you don't have any common sense left. <laughs> I mean, most people have been so reimagined re that they can't fight their way out of a wet paper bag anymore. So let me warn you right now, at the end of the week, when they try to, when it appears that they are most likely going to try to tell you that you are not in a recession, you know better, okay? What somebody tells you on TV or from a, a political arena does not define how you're going to pay your bills this month, how you're going to buy food for your babies, where you're going to find baby formula, and how you're going to pay your energy bill. What's your mamma going to do? Okay, so remember that. You are not stupid. Don't let them treat you like you're stupid because that's the way they gain control when they do that. They only gain control if you allow it. Now, I'm not telling you to go do anything particular, so nobody better take me out of context here. I'm saying don't let them get control of your mind because you are in a recession. Believe me, when you are paying more than double than you were less than two years ago for gas and you can't get, hardly get back and forth to work, you are in a recession. You are in a personal crisis. Might I remind you again, and I will continue to say this, November the 8th, on Highway 321 in Maryville, Tennessee, here in my area where I am, which all of you know, gas was $1.59 a gallon. I took pictures of it. I encourage you and I actually push you to take pictures and screenshots of everything that you're seeing as we are on this journey so that you do not forget where you came from. Document. Document. Write it down, November the 8th, Patera paid $1.59 at Weigel's on Highway 321 in Maryville, Tennessee. Absolutely, I am double that to, oh, excuse me, no, slap me. I am more than double that today. We are right now at about $3.99 a gallon here in the same area, Southeast Tennessee. I know a lot of you out there are paying a lot more. Now listen, they're also gonna tell you that employment and the economy and things are so good. 
Well, things are so doggone good. How come 7-Eleven is, uh, I wrote down some stuff for you today. How come 7-Eleven is, is, is getting rid of almost a thousand employees right now? And when I read the article from MSN, MSN.com, uh-huh. I'm not going, yeah, I went to, even MSN.com is posting an entire article. I'll post it. Everything will be down below. 7-Eleven is letting go nearly a thousand employees because they have to lower their expenses. Their gas is expensive. They're basically, it looks like by the article, they're having to do a, like a restructure of the business. It goes into a lot of different details, but the point is, is people are losing jobs. It's the weirdest scenario I've ever seen in my life. People are losing jobs and places can't get workers. Where the truth is in all of these scenarios that we are seeing, we can only guess. But what I do know is you better be preparing. That's going to be the theme throughout every article I tell you. The next thing I'm going to tell you is this just came out yesterday. Now, this is from, I believe, the Tennessee Conservatives. So, see, I kind of flipped on you. See, see how I'm in the mushy middle? <laughs> Hiring freeze. Nearly half of all small business owners are not willing to hire now because of labor costs and skyrocketing inflation. 45%, this article came out yesterday, I do believe, I'll link it down below, have halted hiring. So this is really, this is where my mind went. And I think, you know, somebody's going to say, well, that's easy for you to say. You know, the, there's been a conversation going on in my home. I don't know if I have said it on a video, but I'm going to say it today. If you are in fear, no, 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 no. We're all in fear of losing jobs. Let me, let me, re if you are an individual out there that could get a job that is not currently right now working due to whatever the reasons we're seeing people not work but you can go get a job right now, one that you're comfortable working at, one that's paying at least a, a wage that you feel is, you know, something you could work for. I, see, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say what I really, I, I can say what I think, but everybody's going to argue it. Just hear me out. We could get to a point, folks, this is the point, we could get to a point that you may not be able to get a job because nobody's going to hire anybody. It's kind of like, I don't want to say get it while the getting is good. Because if I, t I know if I say go get a job at Chick-fil-A, somebody's going to say, who are you to tell me to go work fast food? So see, that's what I'm kind of dancing around here. I'm not telling you to go get anything, but probably a job. Because if you're riding out thinking that the government or your neighbor is going to save you, uh, you're wrong. If you think your churches are going to swoop in and save you, you're probably very wrong because most preachers right now aren't telling their congregations to stock up and to be prepared for hard times. So guess what? When you can't feed Johnny at the little Johnny at the dinner table, they don't care if the, that pastor ain't gonna care if you got a biscuit in that baby's mouth. You hear me? You hear me? If they're not helping people now and if they're not speaking truth now, they're not coming to help you down the road. So I, 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 I want to say I'm gonna say this to you like I would tell my own kids. Um, get your foot in the door. Don't sit around and think that this is going to be a situation where, you know, you can just go get a job whenever you want to. Now, I know there's been some people comment recently saying, oh, they're, they're not really hiring. That's all a lie. Um, I'm not going to get into the minutia of that. I do not believe that every gajillion job posting that I, we can see everywhere that we go is a lie. Maybe some of them are. Maybe some of them only will want you to work three hours a week. I don't know. Okay, I get what you're saying. That's another debate for another day. But you probably should go find out. Because if you're going to be relying on a paycheck by your input of labor at a place of employment, and you don't have one right now, probably would be a good time to get really aggressive and go get one. I want to know that I said that because I don't think people are thinking outside of the box and understanding that if we fall into a recession, which frankly will borderline a depression, if not push us into one. See, they're gonna lie to you. So I mean, you, you could be out here gnawing on trees and not have a thing, and they're and, and and they're gonna lie to you and say that your life is good, and you know you'll be happy. So you need to think about what scenario that you're in. Okay, I am totally sympathetic uh, to a lot of people's 
folks, situations right now for everything that we've been through the last two to three, two years. I get it, but I'm concerned for your future. If you have an opportunity to get employment now and get, it's kind of important for you to thrive, you better take it. You better do it. I want to know that I said that, and uh, I would say that to my own voice, so I'm not taking that back. Last but not least, the family dollar has recalled 400 items. I'll put that down below um, because they were improperly shipped. Imagine that. By the looks of what I saw on the uh, file, it looks to be a lot of body products, uh, medications, uh, toothpaste, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know if you've seen that recall, but 400 items. So that's kind of convenient. You guys already know about the Mylar bag situation. I'm not going to jump in on that other than take care of your due diligence. Take care of your due diligence. I mean, you know, obviously, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of different things that are going to be happening uh, as time presses forth. So, you know, the more that you prepare, the more that you get items when they're available, when you can, the better off you're going to be. A few minutes and just get into what's happening right now. Market up today. We're in a recession and the market doesn't care. The administration just came out a little while ago and it is touting another spending bill that it wants Congress to pass. This will be another $700 billion. Markets like that, more easy, free money coming to the market. Uh, I think this is why gold is up over $30 as I make this video, silver up over a dollar. Uh, this is more massive inflation creation uh, coming to America, $700 billion dollars. Uh, <clears throat> the administration today said that it will produce savings for people. So we're going to uh, print and borrow more money so that it produces savings for people. No, it's going to produce more inflation. And as the administration was out touting this, market went up another 100 points, loves it. Also, uh, they said that we're going to get a 15% minimum corporate tax Guess who's gonna pay that? It's not gonna be corporate America. It's not gonna be the corporation. You and I are gonna pay that corporate tax. That gets passed on to you and I. So get ready to pay more, ladies and gentlemen, for literally everything. They're going to create more inflation. Uh, so while we're raising uh, interest rates, 75 basis points, we're gonna print another, we're about to, this, this thing goes through, we're gonna print another three quarters of a trillion dollars. Yesterday, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said he does not think the U.S. is currently in a recession. <clears throat> I personally don't care what he thinks at this point. He, he, he has been wrong, dead wrong about everything. Uh, he's not doing enough to even fight inflation. They're printing more money, buying bonds, buying stocks while raising interest rates 75 basis points, doing absolutely nothing to fight inflation. This guy, unfortunately, is worthless. Uh, we're told about a strong labor market. Well, jobless claims came out today. Last week, nearly the highest level in a year, 256,000 people filed first-time jobless claims. So, uh, so much for the strong labor market. Pending home sales fell 20% in June versus a year earlier as mortgage rates soared. Stay tuned. Watch this video. I'm going to take you through another development. Uh, what... Uh, $550,000, $650,000, $700,000 buys you, uh, it's, it's laughable. And I don't know who in the world can do this now, even with incentives. So I'll break down the um, financing on these homes that D.R. Horton is offering. I don't know who can do this. And I don't know uh, how bad it's going to get in housing. But what I do know is inflation isn't going away. The labor market is falling apart. People are continuing to lose their jobs uh, every week, every day. Inflation continuing to uh, to soar. So who's going to buy houses uh, when you have a mortgage of three, four, five thousand dollars for a cookie cutter? Just does not make any sense. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts and feel free to comment on anything uh, during this video. Uh, we would love to know your thoughts. So many people. Read those comments. Uh, it's incredible, the wealth of knowledge down in those comments. The Hedge, a storm of indicators show the U.S. consumer is tapped out. The U.S. economy 
is a 70% retail and service economy. This means it is entirely reliant on continued growth in domestic consumption in order to maintain all other elements of the system. They're going to pump more and more money into this economy, trying to get the average consumer to spend it. With manufacturing only a small part of overall employment, only 8%, and agriculture also limited to 10%, our country is overly dependent on spending habits and ultimately consumer debt. And we're going to see more and more consumer debt. Stability of the entire machine rests on people's faith in the economy and their willingness to spend. Well, if they don't send people money here quickly, they're not going to be spending as we're seeing what's happening to, to the Targets and the Walmarts and the retailers and etc. Uh, so today, markets love this. Uh, right now, I don't know where they're going to close. Dow Jones up over 305 points. Loves this. More free money coming. Best Buy cuts its outlook, joining other retailers as inflation pressures shoppers. People aren't buying big screens like they were a year ago when they had all that free money. So uh, we're going to see how much more damage they're going to do to the economy uh, by basically sending out uh, more stimulus and uh, using uh, more uh, of these uh, <clears throat> so how many more spending bills are we going to see how much more inflation are we going to see and again I think this is why gold and silver are skyrocketing today they smell and sense that they're raising rates but not nearly enough. And we're gonna to continue to spend money. The Fed's spending money buying bonds and buying stocks. And now